Hello, everybody, and welcome to this SUSECON session on why Rancher is the key to success. My name is David Holder. I work here as a field engineer based in the EMEA region, and I'm joined here today by my colleague, Christian. So in terms of what we'll be going over today is we'll start off with a bit of an introduction, looking into the challenges that organizations faced when adopting Kubernetes. I'll then hand it over to Christian, who will go into some more advanced topics about, for example, you know, the benefits of containerization in Kubernetes and why SUSE Rancher is a great match for Fujitsu. At the end, I will then perform a bit of an outro in terms of where you can find more information and a bit more information about the relationship between Fujitsu and SUSE. So let's start off by way of an introduction. And the first thing I'd like to go over is the challenges that organizations face when exploiting Kubernetes full potential. So this is taken from a study made by VMware called the State of Kubernetes. And interestingly, they found that, for example, 95% of organizations have difficulty selecting, deploying, and managing Kubernetes. And we all know that the cloud native ecosystem is a huge area to cover. And Kubernetes as a technology is fairly well understood, but in terms of its deployment, in terms of exploiting its full potential, it becomes increasingly difficult because we have multiple cloud providers providing their own distributions of Kubernetes. We have a whole raft of ancillary tooling that we can use. So how do customers and organizations navigate this complexity? They've also found that 51% of participants lack internal experience and expertise with Kubernetes. So even though Kubernetes has become the de facto standard these days for containerized, or containerized orchestration, there is still a shortage in the market in terms of people with experience and skills with those technologies. And this is compounded by the vast array of ancillary tooling from the respective ecosystem. So if we look, for example, for monitoring and logging solutions in the Kubernetes world, there are many to choose from and how to pick these solutions will vary on a number of different factors. 95, I'm sorry, 97% of question participants have had at least one Kubernetes related security breach. So security is at the forefront of everybody's mind, um, obviously when it comes to deploying not only Kubernetes clusters, but any kind of infrastructure. And because a lot of organizations are using Kubernetes to deploy front facing consumable web services, this is an even bigger um, consideration to make in terms of how do we secure and how do we identify security breaches within our Kubernetes environments. In terms of choosing the right cloud native security, so what kind of um, improvements can we get or what things can we benefit from when we adopt a cloud native strategy? So the first thing is to enable application teams to innovate faster. So this enables teams to, for example, implement new features and new products quicker than more traditional ways of developing software, which then gives them a differentiation in the market. And it can also mean that they can get new features, new products out into the market quicker than some of their competitors. We can also achieve consistent immutable apps. So we can produce, for example, predictability in our infrastructure in terms of being able to deploy Kubernetes clusters in various different locations and have that kind of know-how <clears throat> that those clusters are having configured the same and they all behave exactly the same. So for example, when we make a containerized application, the whole philosophy behind containerization is that we create once deploy everywhere we need that application to be. And the underlying kind of foundation for that is a container runtime. So it doesn't matter if our container is running on a local dev machine somewhere or on a bare metal server in a data center somewhere. Uh, because we've packaged it in this kind of wrapper of a container, we know it behaves exactly the same. The elastic nature of Kubernetes also enables us to perform cost reduction. So the ability to more efficiently leverage our cloud resources as and when needed. So for example, within Kubernetes, we have the ability to perform elastic scaling of our applications. So we can not only expand and contract the capacity of our applications at a microservice level, we can also do so at the cluster level. 
So we can match demand as and when needed. So we don't necessarily have to scope our environments and applications to cater for the highest load. We can simply scale up and down as when we see. There's also security benefits of leveraging account cloud native strategy. So there's specific tooling out there, for example, New Vector, that enables us to identify and secure our Kubernetes environments. And the fact that we uh, can address or we can implement our infrastructures and application deployment as code means that we can add additional functionality around the deployments, which could lead to um, security improvements. We also, by leveraging cloud native strategies, can disconnect our applications from infrastructure dependencies. So for example, when we create our containerized application, we've designed them to be portable. So it doesn't matter where they are deployed, whether it's a public cloud, private cloud, bare metal, or on a laptop somewhere, we can run these applications where they need to be. And that inherently gives us the flexibility to be able to deploy and manage our applications and infrastructure, um, regardless of their physical location. And again, we can scale out our infrastructure and applications as we see fit. So we can easily and elastically match demand, shrink and grow our applications and infrastructure and capacity to match those particular demands. So why would you choose Rancher as the underlying orchestrator for your clusters? So as an example, uh, Rancher is the most popular container management solution by number of downloads. We have 35,000 active downloads per month. We have a number of lead uh, contributors to CNCF projects. So we've do actually donated some of our products to the CNCF. Uh, we have a you know pretty stable year on your growth, 20,000 stars on GitHub, and we are trusted by over 15,000 organizations worldwide as a way to manage their infrastructure. And the next part is all about speed and dynamics in today's business, and I'll hand it over to Christian. Thank you, David, for this short introduction. So my name is Christian Litscher. I'm a senior cloud consultant at Fujitsu, and I'm happy to share some ideas with you regarding the software development uh, situation today. So to understand the software development situation, we have to look at the market. The market is growing fast and uh, the needs and requirements are growing from day to day. So nobody wants to wait. Everything, every demand should be uh, satisfied immediately and everything should go continuous and uh, in best case automated. So everyone talks about agility uh, you have to consider methods in your company, how to solve this market requirements. So if, if you look at today's uh, situation in software development uh, companies and departments, so you will see containers today are developed in and for containers. Containers are used for delivering of software and applications and containers are used to operate applications and software. So this is over all platforms, regardless if on premises or in the cloud, uh, everywhere is expected the same environment for operating containers. So it's not a question whether a company has to take care about a container runtime environment, but when? Let's have a look at some numbers from the analysts. Uh, these numbers are not completely actual, but the trend is still going on. So you can see that developers more and more are going to use containers for the application development. The companies more and more take care about having a, an according uh, software operating environment for containerized applications. And the trend is going 
over the next years on and on. To understand better the evolvement of software, uh, let's go a step back in the history and see that software at the early beginning in the early 60s, end of 50s, last century, uh, software was developed directly on hardware, often specialized hardware for a spe specific use case and a specific kind of software. Then in the 90s, uh, last century, the hypervisor area uh, broke on and uh, so virtual machines were used uh, more and more and the hardware, the underlying hardware, uh, could be used more efficiently because uh, several virtual servers could be placed on a single physical machine, on a, on a bare bone, on a bare metal server. So uh, if we go one decade or maybe 15 years uh, back, so the first beginning of containers uh, have been seen on the market and containers are smaller than virtual machines. They are lightweight and uh, made for uh, yeah, ephemeral use cases. So containers can be started and stopped uh, at any time without having an impact on the behavior of the complete application. So the efficiency was growing more and more with the usage of containers and uh, to run containers, there came a new uh, topic into the play, into the game uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an open source uh, project which is the de facto standard for a, a runtime environment for containerized applications. Since Kubernetes has a lot of functionality, it's a very complex uh, software. And to make this software simple to handle and to make it usable for all your use cases on-prem and uh, in the cloud, private or public uh, use cases. So you need uh, a strong and powerful tool to handle all these different types of uh, uh, container environment. And then we talk about Rancher. Rancher is a product uh, require, uh, acquired uh, three years ago by Zuse and it's a very, very powerful and easy to use tool for administrating containerized applications. You can uh, operate different Kubernetes clusters in different areas in the cloud or in your own data center. It's easy to um, provide new clusters from the graphic interface of Rancher and uh, yeah, it's the best tool uh, I can imagine to uh, yeah, handle all your different Kubernetes clusters uh, wherever they are and whatever applications are running on them. Um, let's have a short look uh, into the architecture of a server uh, and the different technologies uh, behind them. So at the early beginning, we are talking about bare metal, so physical servers, which have uh, their uh, resources, their CPUs, their memory and storage and network uh, uh, facilities. And every software running on a physical machine has to be deployed with all dependencies, with all needed libraries and binaries so uh, you have different applications at that time on the same physical machine. With the area of hypervisors, uh, we had an additional opportunity to handle software on a physical machine since uh, we are um, emulating different servers 
on the same physical hardware. So for the software, it feels like a complete separated uh, server, but uh, indeed it's a, uh, yeah, um, it's a virtual server, which is running uh, on the same physical hardware, the uh, bare metal uh, on uh, baseline. So uh, with container engines, uh, there is a new area where the applications uh, have not a complete uh, virtualized server. Uh, they are running in a very, very small and lightweight environment where they have all they need, but nothing more. So uh, no, not every application needs to have access to a USB port or to USB devices, for example, to make it, to make it clear. So uh, they only have the dependencies, the libraries uh, and binaries they need for running a single service, but nothing more. And applications running on a container engine uh, are sharing the, the same uh, kernel, Linux kernel on the hardware and on the server uh, under underlying. So uh, to go one step further, uh, let's have a look here on the uh, evolution of uh, yeah, architecture, software uh, architecture. At the early beginning, uh, there were different modules hard linked together. So uh, a typical application consists of a uh, backend logic, a business logic, some, some data store, for example, database and some uh, user interface uh, on which you are able to, to do all your operations uh, needed for this application. And uh, at the early beginning, all this was a one big block of software hard linked together and uh, the only chance to uh, do updates and upgrades was to change the complete monolithic block. So then in the uh, 70s, uh, we began talking about SOA, uh, service-oriented architecture. So in this time, uh, we began to separate logical units, for example, the user interface and the business logic behind and the database. Uh, we are starting, we were starting to, to separate these logical blocks uh, and they are tightly uh, coupled with an API which uh, yeah, ties them together. But uh, the flexibility was not so big uh, and so convenient because uh, these uh, three blocks in this example here are very big uh, depending on the, on the application and uh, each of them uh, was not so easy to handle. So with the uh, usage of cloud native technology, with the usage of, uh, or with the introduction of containers, uh, we have the possibility to make smaller parts of software, uh, which are located in single containers. So if you uh, drive it to the end, uh, then you can have a single function in a single container. And uh, so a single team is uh, implementing this function and another team is implementing another function and uh, they are loosely coupled and easy to replace and easy to uh, duplicate in case of uh, scaling. So if there is a a need to um, make the software more responsive to handle some heavy traffic times, for example, before Christmas, or if, if you have a shop like Amazon or uh, something else uh, you can imagine. So uh, the software is able with this technology and with this architecture to uh, yeah handle 
uh, traffic uh, peaks and uh, you can scale on a single portion of portion of the soft software you don't have to uh, duplicate the complete software application you can do it on single function uh, level if you want so uh, the software becomes more and more flexible and uh, the quality was raising from day to day because uh, bug fixes for example could be uh, implemented immediately and uh, without affecting the complete application a bug, bug fix uh, could be uh, yeah, put in, in, into place and uh, everything was solved and could run and the quality was uh, yeah, growing up. So let's have a look on the 10 most important benefits of Kubernetes and some additional aspects which comes with usage of Rancher. So you can have a very efficient development because you are using the identical environment for both development and production. Different behaviors due to different runtimes, runtime environments are excluded this way. Development, testing and production are working with identical code in a similar environment. Since all components are based on declarative scripts, they can be archived and versioned in a source code management system like GitHub or GitLab, for example. You speak from infrastructure as code if you are using such scripts, declarative script, scripts. So high productivity due to their architecture containers are quick to launch, easy to distribute, easy to monitor and easy to replace as needed in operation. Since containers are connected to each other via defined interfaces, the underlying code can be created in different programming languages and by teams with different skills. Stability. Because different containers run independently, the failure of one container does not affect the operation of other containers. Developers have the flexibility to troubleshoot in the identified container without causing downtime of the container uh, of the other containers. Automatability. A container orchestration platform automates the installation, management and scaling of containerized workloads and services. So you can simplify management tasks such as rolling out new versions, scaling container apps or providing monitoring, logging and debugging capabilities. Easy administration. In addition to the automatability, permanent monitoring tasks are taking place for each individual service and all necessary measures such as restart, scaling, version change, etc. can be applied only to the relevant containers during operation. Error analyzing and bug fixes. Containerizing an application isolates it and allows it to run independently of others. Therefore, the failure of a container does not affect the operation of the entire application. Developers can quickly identify and fix technical issues within a faulty container without causing downtime in the rest of the operations. Performance. Because containers share the host computer's operating system kernel and don't require their own operating system, servers are used more efficiently and startup time is minimized. Within seconds, faulty containers can be restarted or replicated to handle peak loads. Portability. By encapsulating in containers and abstracting from the host operating system, applications can run on any platform 
on premises or in the cloud. All that is required is a container runtime, such as Kubernetes and powerful management for container orchestration, such as Rancher. Scalability. Container technology offers very high scalability and reliability. Potential bottlenecks in the application can be resolved dynamically by providing additional resources. Integrated load balancers distribute the load evenly according to predefined rules, so that an optimal user experience is always guaranteed. Strong security. Isolating applications as containers prevents the spread of malicious code and prevents unauthorized access. Special mechanism can scan containers for any malicious code they may contain before they are started and can also monitor communication between containers or with resources of the host system during operation. So now let's have a look on Rancher's additional features such as true open source. So it's very important to underscore that Rancher has no limits in the way which kind of applications of tools you prefer and which you which kind of applications you want to use for example for your uh, automatism for your uh, CI and CD pipelines and whatever you want to have in your uh, runtime environment regarding containers. Rancher is not only completely open source, it's open with an open API. So even the user interface can be extended to individual needs. Rancher supports multi-cloud and multi-cluster Kubernetes. So you can have your Kubernetes cluster in different clouds and in as many Kubernetes clusters as you need. So there is no limit uh, on how many clusters you want to have and where are they located. And Rancher can offer a marketplace for your users. An application catalog can be provided for single users or for user groups. In an uh, application catalog, all applications you want to provide can be contained. The, the Rancher experience is you have one Rancher management server which helps you to manage all your clusters in all your locations all over the world if needed. So there is no limit in the number of supported clusters or uh, on the platform where the cluster resides. If you have a look at the uh, Forrester wave, so uh, we can see that, uh, yeah, a big characteristic and a powerful characteristic of uh, Rancher is seen in the multi-cloud uh, possibility, the feature that you can have your uh, Kubernetes cluster in different clouds on different platforms. So it's very, very important and powerful and uh, it uh, differentiates Rancher from the uh, competition. So top ratings for Rancher are as well for their runtime and con uh, orchestration uh, capabilities, for the uh, security features already built in and the con container image management. So you have your own uh, container image reg registry 
and you can have an application store where predefined uh, application packages can easily be um, selected and uh, be uh, operated. So, and the last point where uh, Forrester uh, is, is pointing on is, is the vision and roadmap of Rancher. Uh, we have already seen the uh, Rancher um, container cluster and we have seen that there are so many uh, new features coming in the next time uh, so that we uh, are happy to to look in the future and uh, to to use all these new features to making our products and services uh, even better so why suzu rancher is a perfect match for fujitsu to understand this fact so we have to look at the cloud native strategy of fujitsu which we can see on this slide and uh, so let's let's go around a little bit uh, the multi-cloud orchestration um, possibilities are well supported by uh, suze rancher suze rancher is ready to handle thousands of clusters uh, in different clouds on different provider uh, environments in own data centers in private and public clouds wherever needed and this uh, yeah, strategy fits best. Onboarding is in today's market situation. You remember we talked about it uh, some slides before. Uh, it's, it's very important. So if you as a customer decide to use a specific solution uh, for your requirements, you want to have it uh, ready to go uh, immediately. You don't want to wait. You want to want. You don't want to um, implement something over months. Uh, it should be ready to start uh, in the next few days. And this is uh, the same strategy on both sides, on uh, Suze side and at Fujitsu side as well. So customers are expecting a user-friendly service, but not only user-friendly, they are expecting competence, uh, well-skilled uh, employees, and uh, short response times. And all this uh, fits best together. If I decide to use a specific solution today, I want to, I don't want to change it to tomorrow if new requirements are coming into the game. So uh, my solution has to be uh, expandable and uh, it must be scalable if more and more uh, traffic appears and uh, my business is going on uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to change the, the winning and uh, yeah, running software solution and uh, environment. If we look at uh, SUSE at this point, SUSE is uh, yeah, steadily uh, working on expanding their software uh, offerings. They are not only providing a perfect Kubernetes uh, orchestration uh, software, they are adding uh, from month to month new uh, capabilities, new products uh, are uh, integrated, for example, for, for logging, for monitoring, uh, for developers, uh, for yeah, network uh, support uh, and, and such stuff. So uh, the ECM, the Enterprise Container Management Stack, of Suze Rancher is growing uh, steady. So uh, when I log in is something no customer wants. And uh, this is one of the main uh, strategic topics of Fujitsu. We as Fujitsu 
have always not focused on a single solution. We are focused on different players in the market, depending on the best solution for a specific requirement. And uh, yeah, looking at uh, SUSE in this uh, topic, so we see a seamless open source strategy at, food, at, at SUSE. And uh, so you are completely open to use the tools you want to can you can start with, with everything for free without uh, the need to uh, pay for a subscription for example you can uh, yeah start small and uh, without uh, additional costs and at the moment you need uh, an enterprise support for example so you are willing to pay uh, for a subscription and uh, this has nothing to do with vendor login. This is uh, something you need as a uh, professional uh, enterprise. And uh, it's good to have uh, such uh, opportunities. So um, all this said, let's have a final look at the common, at, at the joint uh, history, uh, Suze and Fujitsu are doing business together since about nearly uh, 25 years uh, seen from today. And uh, we started with big uh, projects in the SAP and of operating system area uh, with uh, SUSE Linux for SAP, for other uh, purposes, for SUSE HANA, we had uh, the SUSE manager in different big projects uh, in use. And since uh, the early 2020s, uh, when SUSE acquires uh, Rancher, so we are working hard and very good together in the market of containerized application development and operations. So uh, we look back at a very, very long common and successful uh, history and both companies uh, always have a win-win situ situation because uh, our both businesses are fitting best together uh, as you can imagine. So at the end of my short presentation, let's uh, do a, a short summary with a yeah, most important topics uh, of our joint solution offering, Fujitsu, SUSE and Rancher. So first of all, and this is an uh, elevator pitch, which I found in the first days I worked with Rancher. Rancher makes Kubernetes easier and the ease of use you will find in all tools, in all uh, applications and services we are offering together with SUSE. The openness and extendability is very important. Our customers should use open systems, not running against artificial fences and uh, they can use whatever tools they need and which they like. So we will not demand them, force them to use specific tools from our own portfolio. So if they have a specific tool, if they have uh, some application, applications running on a specific operating system, so they can use it uh, further and uh, we will not force them to, to do any change. As long as yeah, certain uh, preconditions are in place, so uh, all Kubernetes clusters are supported, which are CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation compliant. So this is uh, the case in all professional uh, Kubernetes distri distributions. So we have large communities helping you with technical, with sales, with pre-sales, 
tasks and uh, offerings whenever needed. So you can uh, have a complete uh, online training or uh, presence training if needed. You can do certifications on uh, Kubernetes, on Rancher, on different uh, operating system uh, products. So feel free to contact us to, to see what is available and uh, which, which is best uh, for, for you, uh, for your specific needs. So at the end, the right pricing models are in place. So starting for free with an open source uh, installation, you can have uh, yeah, pay per use uh, models uh, for, for charging. You can have uh, subscriptions, one-time subscriptions uh, with an annual renewal. So uh, whatever you need for your specific requirements and for your specific business, uh, talk to us, we will uh, help you. And uh, I'm quite sure we have uh, the offering you need uh, right in place. Keep in mind, Suze and Fujitsu are a complete and a perfect, uh, have a partnership which lasts over uh, 20 years and which has uh, gone through uh, very, very big and uh, powerful projects together and uh, with lots of success. And uh, if you want, uh, be a part of, of our success. So if you look at the last slide, we see the Suza Rancher ECM stack, the Enterprise Container Management stack. And this is uh, an overview of the different parts of the SUSE software, which is uh, already uh, supported and ready to run. So on um, the baseline, you see the different uh, Linux uh, operating systems, uh, the different flavors from different uh, uh, vendors, and uh, all these are supported when you use uh, Rancher the different uh, kubernetes distributions are on the next level so uh, depending on uh, cloud usage or uh, on-premises uh, usage you can uh, have the distributions of the cloud provider uh, supported or you can have your own distributions in your own data center uh, supported by the tools rke uh, runtime Kubernetes engine or K3S, which is a lightweight uh, Kubernetes distribution of Rancher uh, specific for edge and uh, IoT uh, purposes. The SUSE Rancher layer above contains all different tools which are useful and which will, will be uh, handled and integrated with the Rancher. And the number of supported tools and integrated tools is growing from day to day. On the highest level, you see the different uh, developer services which, supporting, uh, which are supporting developers while uh, developing containers with container registries and uh, container runtime engines, which have their own single uh, runtime environment for the developer's uh, notebook. If you, if you want to, you have a Rancher desktop, which has the full uh, possibility to uh, develop and test solutions on a single uh, desktop and you have the uh, deployment engines for uh, big and uh, multiple uh, Kubernetes uh, installations and uh, pr pr provisions uh, all over the world if you need. And uh, so this stack is very, very powerful, it contains more and more all you need uh, regarding containerized applications and 
Kubernetes. So with that, uh, I would like to hand over back to David for some final remarks. I hope you found some interesting material in my presentation. Everything is free for download. And uh, so, David, it, the stage is uh, back yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. So in terms of where you need to go to find out some more information, we have a lot of online resources. Um, first of which is our YouTube channel. So we have a lot of content on there that varies from beginner level and introductory videos all the way up to our master classes, which take a very specific subject and go into great detail in a technical way um, into you know how we leverage that technology with Advancer. Uh, so for example, we've had uh, previous deep dives on vSphere provisioning and GitOps with Fleet. We also have our product documentation. So for Rancher, any of our Kubernetes distributions and some of our ancillary products like Longhorn and uh, um, Harvester, et cetera, there are dedicated documentation sites for, for those products. So you can view those if you wanted to get more technical information, some installation guides, some best practices, et cetera. We've also relaunched the Rancher Academy. So this is more of a structured training program that you can use to get more familiar with Rancher um, our distributions of Kubernetes and simply Kubernetes in general. You can simply just reach out to us as well. So on the slide here, you have my email address. So uh, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, feel free to reach out to Christian, who is our funded head for, for Rancher at Fujitsu and also works as a senior cloud consultant. Um, so we can help with kind of those technical aspects. So if you have any queries regarding Rancher or any of our products, um, or if there's if you've encountered any issues or have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Jens is also the global alliance director, so he is aligned to Fujitsu specifically. So Jens handles more of the commercial side of things. So if you want to know more about you know our SKUs and pricing and anything commercial related, uh, feel free to reach out to Jens. And of course, if we come across any questions we can't answer, we'll help you find the right person. We also have a community Slack channel. So this is where we have a community of over 20,000 odd people who are posting questions and answers and helping each other out when it comes to not only Rancher, uh, but just Kubernetes and the wider ecosystem in general. And you can also contact any of us over Teams as well. So we have a number of different Teams groups signed up for various different divisions of Fujitsu. Um, that can reach out to us and ask kind of ad hoc questions or anything rather specific. And again, we're more than happy to, to help to collaborate. So if you do have a customer or an engagement that requires, you know, Rancher, Kubernetes, or you need some help with proof of concepts, um, we have, you know, we're more than happy to, to help out and get involved whenever, wherever you need us. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of SUSECOM. Thank you very much.